Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nish Kumar Singh and we are talking about Load Runner Tutorials. As a part of today's tutorial, we are actually talking about adding up the graphs and the monitors as a part of the controller. In controller, we can definitely add a lot of monitors which in turn is called as a graph which will be populated after the execution is completed. During the runtime of a particular scenario, the scenario will be capturing all the monitor statistics as per the execution and will be displayed to you as a part of the analysis when you complete the execution and populate the results in the third component of the load runner, which is analysis. So today in this particular tutorial, we will be understanding that how exactly you can set up a graph, how you actually add a monitor and what are the configuration steps in order to set them up to be enabled in order to capture these information. Well, let's get started and understand the same in a very quick and simple way today. As a part of this tutorial, we are further continuing with the controller of the load runner in order to understand what are monitors, how to add a measurement in the load runner controller component and configuring a graph and how to view that during the runtime. In order to start understanding what exactly the monitors and graphs are all about in controller, we would like to begin with navigation first. In order to access your graphs and monitors, you must be in the run tab of the controller and on the left you find all the available graphs which can actually be populated as a part of the execution of a scenario. Remember, at any point of time, your graphs and monitors must be configured before starting the run because a graph cannot be monitored or cannot be configured during the runtime and if you do so during the runtime, it may not capture all the relevant information right from the beginning of the run. So always have a best practice of configuring your graphs and monitors before you can click on the start scenario button. The number one thing here is talking about monitor. The monitors are basically different options which you find as a part of your menu here and you can definitely look forward to any of the measurement units to be added there. For example, if I'm talking about the Windows resources, each one of these here are called as measurement. So these measurements are included by default when you include the Windows resources graph, which is here in the system resource graph. The blue color represents here that this graph has been included as a part of your run scenario. If during the run of a scenario, you don't find any of the graph in blue color, that means that is yet to be included in your measurements. So for any particular graph, there can be different measurements which can be done. And that's what you do by going to the monitors in the menu and clicking on the add measurement. Let's click on this add measurement button and you see there are a lot of things. The number one thing is to add the monitor server machine, like from where you want me to monitor all these information. So right now our server is our monitor server and that's called as localhost. Even if you click on add, it will automatically detect that you have a server connected to, which is configured in the design tab as a load generator. So once you say, okay, it will automatically populate the available resource measurements on the local host. If you want, you can further configure it by right clicking on this or clicking on add further. You can see the details like do you want to have anything specific like the total time, process utility, user time, average idle time and so on. There are a lot many other things about a particular measurement. Similarly, this can be further filtered by any other asset which you want to. And you can definitely even include the instances which you need. So for any particular graph, you can definitely include them and you can add measurements to add further monitors. So putting it all together, when it comes to monitoring or monitors, monitors are basically your graphs, which you actually include as a part of your scenario execution. And measurement are the parameters of those graphs or those monitors, which you actually want to target. So if you see some of them are being populated, for example, processor time, processor information total. So we just added that and now it is being showing me what's the maximum so far, what's the minimum so far, what's the average, standard and last. So all the information will start getting populated as you add them in the measurements. Okay, so monitors and graphs are like this. Plus, you do have a window completely dedicated to view the runtime graphs that during the execution, you can always observe these graphs, which is being populated. 
and the same thing can also be further optimized to see more graphs for example you may have a lot of graphs on the left right but you only see four of them because when you click on right and you say view graphs you have different options here like show one graph at a time show two graphs at a time right now it is showing four graphs so it is disabled show eight graphs or custom numbers so let me go to show eight graphs and you will see the eight different graphs are being displayed here if I double click on any particular graph that's a shortcut to maximize it okay so one graph at a time and double click again to go back to your settings again you can just double click on any other graph and double click to go back if you want to change the layout right click on this go to view graphs and select the layout which you wish to similarly open a new graph which means that you can add a new graph at any point of time so you should be doing this as a best best practice before starting the execution but yeah you can always do that during runtime but that's not a good practice because it will not capture everything right from the beginning so we always recommend you to have capture it right from the beginning before you can start the scenario so you can always add a new graph right from here as well or you can just right click here and open which will show you the option configure here allows you to configure it for further settings like what kind of configuration do you want to have for the graph for example refreshal rate like the interval of populating a dot on your graph the time relative to start scenario the moment you start the scenario it should start capturing graph time whole scenario that is overall scenario 60 seconds or only 80 seconds and so on and display time as line and bar value type as average so you can just configure there are a lot of options available here which you can actually find out and you can make use of them to further configure plus you can define some of the other important settings as well which comes as a part of graph, uh, graph configurations in the controller now what we'll be doing right now is quickly going back to the design and just check that we have configured all the necessary settings and I'm just executing a simple scenario to show the population of the graph so let's come to the run tab and click on start scenario the moment you get started with the scenario okay I think I have done some mistake here because I just added one user so probably I will not be able to see some good results so let us go and add some more users so let me add 10 users here and uh, let's come to the run tab and start the scenario so now my execution has captured this and they are going in the interval so we will be just observing the graph layout that we are getting populated with so right now we are just observing if there are any graphs being populated and uh, you just need to observe that how exactly these things will happen at the same time on the left you can have a look on like the ones which are displayed in the blue are populated right now even if you don't display on the screen it is populated at the back end like the data is being captured data is being stored and you can definitely generate them once you are done with the execution of the scenario and you can see them in the analysis right now if I click on anything for example right click I say open it will just open that particular graph then I have to go with adding or creating a configuration for this which is done so as far as I've added a parameter okay I don't think that's the reason okay so you cannot add a new parameter for this and you cannot basically uh, populate the data during the runtime. So you can see the graphs being populated and again user defined data points. Now that's not there. Uh, HTTP response per second. So let's include this open. So you can have this. Oh, okay, all these things will be populated later once your execution completes. So what I wanted to show you here is that how exactly a navigation window works here. So can you see that HTTP 200? So the response code is being displayed to you for the graph which you just added and it turns into the blue. Similarly, for example, pages downloaded per second, open, and uh, this will turn into blue the moment uh, this starts working. So it will capture. And believe me or not, there are a lot of graphs which are not shown to you, but all these blue ones will be visible in the uh, analysis part of our uh, load runner. Okay, But the other ones has to be selected. So you can just configure them before. So can you see that now these are empty? That means they're not able to capture because we configured them or add a measurement here. So let's add localhost and say, OK. Yeah, there are a lot of information, as you can see. So each graph basically carries different information. It all depends on you. What is that you would be interested in? And uh, you would definitely love to go ahead with that.
So now you will see this graph is being populated again and it will start capturing all the events, whatever you have related to it. So this is the list of all possible graphs which you can actually find out and there are any instances you would see here. The error is basically to highlight no matter the count is 30 but the error remains the same. So you just have to find out what exactly it is. So if you see status code 500 internal server error happened for this particular page. So these are the things which you basically observe uh, when it comes to the load runner analysis uh, during a scenario execution. So this was all to tell you that how exactly you interact with monitors and graphs during a controller scenario. And you can definitely have different views of the graphs. You can add any other graph which is available here. So now I added it turns into blue. So if anyone with the graph which are in black in color, you can definitely add them. But we recommend you to add them before starting the scenario so that it can be configured and captured right from the beginning. All right. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the content.